Hello, I'm Christina Hendricks, and in this short video, I'll talk about two thought experiments by a British philosopher named Philippa Foote. She's widely credited with creating the first version of what later came to be known as the trolley problem, which many philosophers after her have written about. She wrote about it in an article called The Problem of Abortion and the Doctrine of Double Effect in 1967. In this video, I'll talk about trolleys, transplants, and the doctrine of double effect. In Foote's version of the trolley problem, it involves the driver of a runaway trolley. The brakes have failed and the trolley is moving very, very quickly. The trolley is in a narrow ravine and there is just room there for two tracks, the one the trolley is on and another that branches off the first. The problem is that the track on which the trolley is currently, there are five workers symbolized by the black circle in the graphic on the right. On the other track, there is one worker, symbolized by the smaller red circle. As Foote puts it in her article, given the nature of the situation, anyone on the track the driver enters is bound to be killed. The question here is, is it morally permissible for the driver to turn the trolley onto the second track, thereby killing one person instead of five? Foote claims in her article that it is. You may not agree, but let's just go along with it for the sake of the interesting argument she makes later. Now consider another example from Foote, which Judith Jarvis Thompson, a philosopher who also wrote about the trolley problem, calls transplant. On the face fit, it seems somewhat similar to the trolley driver example. Here, imagine that there are five people who are in need of organs to survive, and they must get them very quickly, within a few days. Now, someone comes into the emergency room with a deep cut that needs stitches, but who is otherwise healthy. I'm embellishing Foote's example here a bit, but the idea is the same. The question is, if it's permissible to steer a trolley onto a different track, thereby killing one person instead of five, is it permissible for a surgeon to kill one person to give their organs to five who would otherwise die? In both cases, one person dies instead of five, and in both cases, someone intentionally causes the death of the one. Footnotes that the transplant case seems very wrong, much more wrong than the case of the trolley driver steering onto a track with one worker instead of five. While it is morally permissible for the trolley driver to turn the trolley, according to Foote, the surgeon may not kill the healthy person in the emergency room. But what is the difference between these two cases? One possible way to explain the difference is through the principle or doctrine of double effect. According to the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy, this says that it is sometimes permissible to perform an action that causes a serious harm, such as the death of a human being, as a side effect of promoting some good end. Thus, there can be a double effect of an action, that which one intends and which is morally good, and that which is foreseen as an unintended bad side effect. There's another requirement, though. The bad effect, such as the serious injury or death of a human being, must not be used as a means to bringing about the good effect. So you can't do something bad to a human being as what's required to bring about the good result. This is what might be used to make a distinction between the trolley driver case and the transplant case. In the transplant case, the surgeon uses the death of the healthy person as a means to achieve the good effect of saving five people. She can't achieve that good result without killing the healthy person. But that's precisely what the principle of double effect will not allow. And it's not the case for the trolley driver. The trolley driver doesn't need the one worker on the other track to die to save the five other workers. In fact, the action of moving the trolley to the other track would be just as effective in saving the five workers if there was no one on it. The death of the one worker is then a foreseen bad effect, but not a means to achieve the intended good effect. Still, the principle of double effect isn't a perfect solution. For example, distinguishing between what is directly intended and what is foreseen but not directly intended may be difficult. Foote argues that the principle of double effect can offer some direction in differentiating between the trolley driver and transplant cases, but she says that a better way to do so is by appealing to negative and positive moral duties. Negative moral duties are duties of non-interference, things you must avoid doing to others. They include things such as duties against stealing or against causing injury or death to others. It seems clear that running someone over with a trolley would violate a negative duty toward them. Positive moral duties, on the other hand, are actions you should do for people, actions rather than avoidances. These may include, for example, caring for others, such as family members, or actions of generosity towards strangers, such as giving money to charities. Doing something that saves a life could fall under a positive duty. Now that brings up an important point because, on the whole, positive duties are less stringent than negative ones. While you should almost always avoid injuring or killing others, you don't need to almost always do what it takes to save them, or almost always give money to charity, etc. 
And this, according to Foote, is what distinguishes the trolley driver case from the transplant case. In the transplant case, the surgeon violates a negative duty not to kill an innocent person in order to fulfill a positive duty to save five lives. But in a choice between negative and positive duties, usually the negative one weighs more, so the surgeon may not operate on the healthy person. In the trolley case, however, the trolley driver is in the unenviable position of having to choose between violating two negative duties. There are no other options. As Foote argues, since in this situation the driver cannot avoid violating a negative duty, it seems clear that he should do the least injury he can, which is to choose to kill one person instead of five. That's the answer Foote gives to the difference between the case of the trolley driver and the transplant, and why the trolley driver may turn the trolley, but the surgeon may not go ahead with the transplant. Many other philosophers have written about these issues since, and they don't all agree on how Foote solved the problem.